So good afternoon, everyone. At the outset, I would like to thank DOS, especially Dr. Namrata Sharma, for giving me this opportunity to talk about cataract surgery in polymorphous times. So the challenge with these eyes is that there is a very dense nuclear sclerosis associated with poor zonular support in some cases. Also, you can have various combinations of crowded anterior chamber, microcornea, microphthalmus, poor pupillary dilatation, and some of them can have nystagmus. And most importantly, some of the patients are one-eyed. And the surgeon feels the pressure of operating on the uh, patient's uh, eye with various challenges, one eye, and feels responsible for the precious little vision that the patient has. To top it, there are no clear-cut guidelines because I said that the challenges can be present in various permutations and combinations, and especially the challenge of so, poor zonulus support, microcornea, and microphthalmia. So you have to take each case independently. I would like to share my experience of operating on 36 eyes of 34 patients, and I'll just share. Uh, briefly about the challenges that I face. Let's first look at the clinical profile of these patients. Half of them had very poor vision, less than 660. And uh, they had various grades of cataracts that is ranging from posterior subcapsular to total cataract, near total cataract. The axial length was uh, 20.5 to 27.25. And most of them had astigmatism below three. Microcornea was there in 13 eyes and nystagmus was there in 10 eyes. So as I said before, that the coloboma can affect various structures in various combinations. You can have affliction of the iris, lens. When the zonules are absent, it's called lenticular coloboma, retina choroid, optic nerve, and macula can be involved. So this is the profile of the patients. The lens thickness in these patients can vary from 3.42 to 5.12. At least in my set of patients, the anterior chamber depth was 1.8 to 3.25. So I could uh, get away with PACO emulsification in 31 eyes. In one eye, I had started off with PACO, had to convert into lensectomy. And uh, in four eyes, uh, I had to do an ECC. So in four patients, I couldn't put the lens and had to leave the patient to pay. So I would like to share the problems that I faced. And the biggest problem in a cataract surgery is when you leave the patient to pay. So in one patient, I had a PCR during I, I, this eye. Uh, I, there's a microcornea you can see, and there was inferiorly coloboma, and there was zonular weakness as well. And in this patient, I started off with PACO. After doing the nucleus emulsification, there was a PCR at the time of cortical wash. I had placed a CTR in this case, and I had to remove the CTR. So when I was removing the CTR, I lost the dexes and I lost everything. I left the patient to pay. I didn't put the eye away. In this patient, we had the challenge of extreme microcornea, and along with that, what was more important is that it's a very crowded anterior chamber that the patient had. After putting all the instruments, I just couldn't proceed with PACO. I had to call the uh, retina colleague to go ahead with the lensectomy. So obviously, the IOL wasn't placed. In this patient, uh, again, I let's I have the video of this patient. So I had started off uh, with the plan of doing a PACO in this case. We can see there's an inferior coloboma and uh, it is present in the lens also. That is when the zonules are absent, it's called lenticular coloboma. I am trying to do a rexis. I've used the hooks to uh, dilate, iris hooks to get a better exposure, but I lost the rexis and I had to convert it into ECC IOL. What is important is that I'm prolapsing the superior pole of the nucleus, the dense cataract up into the AC and then using a vectus. Now, we don't want the pressure counter pressure technique. You can see how hard the nuclear sclerosis is, how hard the uh, cataract is, and the bag has folded up. So, I haven't put the lens. Uh, in other case, I don't have the video or the photo, but here, the after nucleus emulsification, the rex is extended. 
and uh, believe you me it doesn't happen usually for me i've been doing fakos but what i've noticed is that in these patients the rexus is more friable it can give way at any point now uh, let's look at uh, some of the other challenges of other patients that i operated on this uh, uh, patient has an inferior uh, coloboma of the iris as well as the lens and i've used intracameral adrenaline to dilate the pupil using hoops to get a better exposure here what is important in this these cases is that after doing a capsular rexus you should do a good uh, cortical uh, good hydro procedures to free up the nucleus and the uh, uh, cortex from the back because you don't want to stress the uh, zonules further you can also inject the high molecular viscoelastic to tampon at the vitreous behind and uh, you do the fako as i mentioned before that these uh, cataracts are they behave differently on table from what they appear in the opd opd what occurs as grade 2 to grade 3 appears very dense on table and there is no harm in bringing the manipulating and bringing it a little up this uh, uh, i did the dry uh, cortical wash because uh, if you use irrigation aspiration the fluid can go from the area of zonular weakness and if you are facing a positive pressure it could be that the fluid is going behind and hydrating the vitreous so this is an option need not be done in every case that dry cortical wash now in this particular case you can see there's a hypermature cataract i plan to do a fake emulsification i began with the Uh, staining the capsule there you can see this calcification fibrosis of the capsule i use a hoop to dilate and uh, to get my uh, rexus completed i tried everything i've started with a cystic tone then i tried using a uh, curved scissor from the side core to cut it then also used uh, i opened up you see in the video i uh, made a clear corneal incision and uh, used uttarata to go across the area of fibrosis used a scissor to cut it but after doing all these things my rexus again extended and i could i had to give further extensions to the uh, capsular rexus and also to the wound and uh, i had to convert it into extra capsular uh, surgery cataract extraction surgery you can see that i am taking out the fibrous uh, part of the capsule but despite that this my rexus had extended and i am giving further extensions to both the capsular rexus and my wound what is important is you have to be very liberal now had i planned this as an ecc i will see pressure counter pressure is not working here i have to bring the superior pole out if i put too much pressure the vitreous can prolapse from the area of the zonular weakness so that technique does not work it's better to prolapse it out use a vectus to take the nucleus out had i planned it as an ecc i will i wouldn't have landed up with such a large tear corneal uh, incision so i think there's no shame in doing extra capsular cataract extraction plan surgery put an iol in these cases i started off uh, with a fako and uh, put eventually put an iol but landed up with a very large clear corneal incision now in this case i was wiser so i uh, though many of you will say no this is a very fakeable case why you planned an ecc iol but after burning my fingers with the other cases i have put an iol i have planned an ecc i wind up with my surgical outcomes this is uh, you can see that at glass appointment the visual acuity ranges from 6 6 to counting fingers basically depends on the health of the macula so it's important to do your pre operative planning by doing white to white if it's less than white to white is less than 8 mm plan lensectomy straight away and uh, if you feel that fako cannot be done because of the poor zonular support you can plan ecci as well thank you thank you thank you dr basi for the beautiful presentation excellent presentation